There we are. Oh, it's all you need. <laughs> naked, <laughs> naked. I want to check the video. Of course. All you need is naked. All you, all need, you is need is naked, of course. So here we are, my friends. Here we are, girls. And Buonasera da Roma. Buonasera dall'Italia. Buonasera da Roma. Ciao. Ciao a tutti. <laughs> Italian lesson. How is hello? Good evening. So here we are. Okay. And okay. here we are to speak about a very, very spicy topic. <laughs> Woo! It's Woo! hot. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> So we're doing this, Esther, because I noticed your reaction to me mentioning last week that on British TV we have this show called Naked Attraction. And you were horrified, weren't you? And Fiametta, you said, well, you think us Italians are hot. But goodness me, what are you doing there in Britain? Uh, <laughs> Can you see? But no. you know, at the same time, Jenny, I was thinking about what, what's behind this kind of um, program, this kind of TV uh, program. Sure. And mm -hmm. Inside myself, I, I was asking myself, what's the need behind this? Mm -hmm. And my answer was maybe now in this time, our humanity ask for truth. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, yes, yeah. So you so, mean that mm -hmm. the, this need of, of nakedness, it's corresponding mm -hmm. to the need of humanity for reality, for truth. To yes. See through. Okay. Transference. So we have a saying here from a Jack Nicholson film, with my body, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> you can't <Yeah. laughs> It's just too much to deal with. And yeah. at, the same, at the same time, now more than ever, we'll be living, we've been living, we live in a time where, you know, nakedness, it's kind of normal. We bring it on TV, commercials and everything. You can see naked body everywhere. And the fashion industry are displaying the skin, human skin, you know, so... Uh, however, at the same time, our inner nakedness, you know, our emotions are hidden more than ever. So can you uh, notice that, you know, it's opposite. The more we are, we could say that the more we are naked outside, the more we are covered inside and vice versa. How do you think about that? It is very interesting because this show, this TV program, as we said, there, I think there's six um, people in cubicles with these curtains that go up and up and up, revealing a little bit of the body, say the, the, the legs, then the genitals. Then I'm the chest, thinking about the genitals. Then, yes, the genitals. Let's get the genitals over with. And um, the interesting thing is that although they know each other's body because they've been judged on those naked physical attributes the interesting thing is that at the end when the one has been chosen and they go out for a meal most of the time in the ones that I've watched they don't get on they, mm -hmm. they don't have the emotional connection so although they've bared all and <clears throat> seemingly stood there naked vulnerable and true mm -hmm. Their emotions, you're right, Fiametta, their emotions are guarded. It's like, well, I I present myself, the whole of me, naked, vulnerable, true. But no, Fiametta, they're not being vulnerable, are they? Because they're not displaying those emotions. And do you think 
it takes a certain type of character, um, Esther, to go on a show like that? Does it take a certain type of person? Because I wouldn't go on. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Neither would I. I don't even wear a topless on the uh, uh, when I go to the to the beach in the in the summer. No. Well, that, that's not just about modesty. Yeah. It's about health. I mean, burnt nipples, guys. That's not a good thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Esther, yeah. would you go on a show like that? Um, I can. I, I I prefer. If it's Fiammetta, that she's a master of emotion, you know? She's oh, yeah. a teacher of emotions. Okay. Even, and even, you know, um, Fiammetta, can you talk about emotions and how people today is connected or not with their inner emotion? And after I can, I can talk to you about some yes physical attributes and even where emotions are shown the way we are living our emotions are shown in our face and in our body well i thank you esther i would say something where you were talking where you were speaking i was remembering um once that uh during therapy uh, I was put in front of a strange, what I call phenomenon, but actually, um, it may happen many times. The more uh, theatrical, is that the word? Theatrical? The more fancy and noisy and we are, the more we are hiding our real emotions. So uh -huh. when I when I eventually this being so uh, noisy, extraversal. It's not only extraversal, uh, uh, extrovert. I would say uh, super, super, super fancy, super, you know, super noisy. I would say. Okay. Um, ah, it's a sort of fog that we are putting. Uh, it's kind of a it's kind of, of ah yes this is very kind of hiding so when we talk about people going to a show where they will be naked physically you know i would never i would never have you know i would never do that i never say never but never okay. Say never. <laughs> okay but uh in my imagination somebody who dares to go there and 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 show the naked truth, the naked body, and the naked truth of the body, would probably be someone who emotionally it's double locked in, you know, oh. because to and display the body, to display a naked body like that with with no shame or with a just a little shame or being. Or Sort of an exhib ex exhibit. Ex exhibit. Yes. Yeah, yes. Um, you are just, uh, you know, dazzling. How is the word? You are just woo, enlightening the other one with your naked body. So you are just uh, moving the attention from the inner you to the outside body. Okay. Yes. Once upon a time, it was the opposite once upon a time i mean long time ago in different times we used to uh, express our emotion our romanticism our sweetness and we would eventually be more um uh, uh pudic how do you say that pudicity how would you say when yeah. you are uh, shy with your... okay you would eventually be more um mysterious mysterious with your body with your nakedness well in, in victorian times it was oh. outrageous to show an ankle in britain you know an ankle the revealing of an ankle was considered quite decadent well nowadays um, even even some cultures nowadays 
yeah. uh, and to to you know to hide under uh, mystery mystery mm. the, you know even the hair which is uh, for yeah. a woman you know it's we said that last time it's something very seductive yes and, and in, in uh, air it is in fact showing which moment in, for women we are living uh, you notice many times when we are changing or something is changing inside of us before our logical mind mm -hmm. um, is conscious of this changing we are, we have the impulse to change our hair. This is very interesting. And the air, it is mm, something that is linked to uh, inner movement. Mm. And about what you were saying, um, I, I think that is very interesting maybe to find how today we are, yes, we are more, um, we can say friendly with nudity, with, with the naked body for market, for marketing, or, you know, because we are modern women. <laughs> but this is very, very far from intimacy. You know, I, um, Esther, just to say, as you've both remarked, that um, the, the naked body or even the body in underwear very skimpy very um small underwear uh is used in big billboard posters on the motorway and in marks and spencers which is perhaps our most reputable department store here and it surprises me that um the the models that are chosen to to show the underwear they're always very very skinny very yeah. small and they're not really showing a proper, uh, a, an ordinary woman's body. And so in a sense, they're, they're almost wearing um, a suit, if you like. They're wearing a form that the advertisers think is a good coat hanger, if you like, for... Coat for hanger. And, yeah. um, Man, can is that, yeah. coat hanger. In agreeing with Fiametta, that maybe people that go on these shows, they're, they're happy, they're confident in their body, but their body is kind of being used as something that is not them. It's not their character. It's mm -hmm. like um, showing off a sports car, you know, um, in a sense. They're not showing their real selves, even though they are naked. And also, um, as you said about the reversal there, Fiametta, wasn't it that Adam and Eve, of course, were naked until they knew shame by Eve eating of the apple of knowledge? And, and so therefore, like you said, there is that reversal that it was sacred to be naked um, back in the day, a long time ago. So I, I do understand what you mean. It's very interesting. And by the way, if we, if we see we are born naked. Of course, yes. Yeah. However, our body, our body smells. You know, we we have humors inside of our body. This is the Galenic system. This is the, the Hippocratian system. So a picture, uh, not advertised, doesn't smell. <laughs> you know, it's just an image. In yes. fact. Nudity is a multi-sensorial experience. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the the the, um, the models are really like mannequins, coat hangers for the clothes to sell clothes. That's yes. For. Yeah. To sell an idea. I mean, yeah. the real the real nakedness, the naked truth. It's not the perfect, let's say, perfect body on a commercial. The naked truth, it's an average body of an average woman or a man or with man. their body humors, their, their, their smell, you know, the hair on their skin, you know, that is the naked their truth. history, you know, the scar face, the, the, there is a lot of signs on our, our skin that are uh, telling our history. Um, and 
the, the as you as Esther was saying, the smell that we are now required to cover up, you know, we should be all the time, you know, surrounded by flowers, aura, and but actually our body smells, and that smell is actually the first information that we send outside to the world and to the other ones. The first thing that our body perceives from the other person is the smell, even if we don't recognize it uh, rationally. Uh, it the garment, you know, the yes, chemistry. The yes, it goes, it is like the way we were recognizing uh, each other in our primitive history. And mm. I tell you something, something else. Most of men are really appreciating the true smell of the woman. Mm. But the natural. Yes, because it is like they can recognize the woman. And even us, that we are women, we can recognize our men from this and smell. Plus that is the animal in our body. That is the animal in our body. So all the men and w women that are watching us, please let us know how do you feel about uh, human body smells? What is like for you? Are you confident with it? Uh, do you like it in a man or you rather prefer a man using... <laughs> Well, it was, it was <laughs> and we were saying the other time, smelling like like prima donna, like power, like you know. Oh and, yes, yes, yes. And Jenny, you as hypnotist, you know how many times people are scary about hypnosis because they are scared to be naked in front of you. Yes. Yes. This, is, this is also a link and with magnetism for example this intimate connection is very loud mm. because it is a connection between the body so my body as operator and the body of the person we with with i am con i am connecting with uh, for example, in magnetism, this silence and this naked truth, it is like the, 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 the basic principle of the animal magnetism. You know that mesmerism is in fact animal magnetism and animal magnetism is connected to our primary essence. Our primary nature, most of the time, um, why, for example, to be a good mesmerist, you must be very sensitive and very respect of the other and have a lot of respect for the exactly. other. Because oh, no. there is silence. For you, it, for you to do it to me in Milan, I think uh, <laughs> there had to be Milan. a lot Across there. So for, for those of you who are watching, go to the, the the Facebook page, Magnetism Advanced Hypnosis and Personality, and you'll see me. I've, I've reposted it lately. You'll see me being completely relaxed, stiff as a board, propped up between two chairs after being mesmerized and having all this magnetism worked on me by you, Esther. And there was a lot of trust there. And yes, it was very, um, I felt very vulnerable in a sense, but willing to be vulnerable because there is that bond, isn't there? There's the, the unconscious bond that knows that we're safe, even though it looks very dramatic. Yes. Do, it looks very dramatic and um, people get a little bit worried about it, but it, it's the best feeling in the world it's a wonderful feeling to be that connected and that entrusted to to your uh, special skills you know it, it is a, a primal thing isn't it animal magnetism 
yes it is it is when you really connect to your uh, primary senses so it is when it is the word of silence we can say and in that silence where there are no words that can define ourselves and even can protect ourselves in that silence our body speaks and tells a lot of things and our body never uh, say um, it, uh, lies lie. always never, lie. never lies and always says the truth as it is the kingdom of sensation during a session of mesmerism of animal magnetism for example sometimes the body release some emotions that are mm. stuck inside yes. and sometimes you can um, really live with the other um, some different phenomena some crises you know, mm. or some um, tick, or even cry, or even uh, rigidity. I mean, it's the real language of the body. And in that moment, if you are not, uh, and sometimes people, it is really um, releasing also old smells. So uh, some toxic, that they have inside of us. So as mesmerist, I can say that if you want to be a good magnetizer, be prepared to, how can I say, to sporcarti le mani, I mean, to, to yeah. be really in, to be really in with the other. I mean, uh, what you are saying is that mesmerism is a kind of practice that especially because you work with the inner energy of the body the animal of the body the yes. primary instinct and everything that doesn't speak with words of course in that energy ancient smells like uh odd energies can be released so you were saying that the relationship in a mesmerism therapy it's very intimate because you receive and, and interact with all the that naked truth of the other one's body. Yes, and there is also uh, some touches. You touch the other. Mm -hmm. And so you must be fine with yourself, with your intimacy, okay. and of also course. with the intimacy, a real intimacy of the other. This is not mm -hmm. sex. Um, mm -hmm. Esther and Fiametta, we have a couple of questions just whilst we're on this subject and particularly of the, the magnetism, the mesmerism you did on me where I was propped up between those two chairs. Alluring hypnosis says, but would you be really, but would you be really trusted if it was a bigger guy doing the mesmerism who is also a hypnotist? So Fiametta, my question to you then is, what if it was Jason Mamboa doing the hypnotism? Well, if it was Jason Momoa doing mesmerism to me, I really hope the smells that I released were smell of love. <laughs> were, were, were attractive smells because you know, with a Jason Momoa, I would love to attract him to me. <sighs> I think what it means is that um, we do go beyond the physical. I mean, I love Esther. Esther, you know I love you and I trust you implicitly. Though if you were in a different body, mm. I'm sure there would be part of me that would still feel that connection. There needs to be a trust. And it, it's not so much um, whether it's a big, strong man or a smaller female. This is a, a different connection, isn't it, Esther, really? Yes, it's, it's a connection between human beings without sex. Yeah. Maybe I have a man in face of me, I have a woman, but in that moment, this is, that, this is not a woman and this is not a man. We are just human beings. Mm -hmm. 
again, uh, alluring hypnosis has said um, uh, perhaps that we wouldn't have been that comfortable uh, for a guy to do it. I don't think there would be that same trust of letting go. But the, we were in a, a big hall with, with how many other neuroscientists? I think I was safe. I think, <laughs> you know, if there was a guy there and he was doing, well, there was Vincenzo, wasn't there? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how many people does he turn into a plank? A piece of wood a um, <laughs> and because of an audience i think that it's a very good question alluring hypnosis it's a very good question because it is about how whether you're a hypnotist a mesmerist a magnetist it's all about um your relationship with the client and making them feel safe and if they don't feel safe it's not going to work you know exactly. you're not going to be is, what yeah. we call the alliance, you know, yeah. Yeah. the moment where you connect with the client. I speak as a counselor, for example, because nakedness, it's not only, I mean, nakedness, it's linked to trust. Mm. Uh, it requires to trust the other one to let your nakedness express. It doesn't matter if we talk about the physical nakedness, but in this case, especially the inner nakedness, nudity, you know, because uh, as we were saying before earlier, it's nowadays, it's even easier to show a naked body rather than to show our inner feelings. So yeah. it takes trust in order to open up to the other one see our naked truth yes and and we build our and we build that trust when we get you know linked and we build the alliance with our client maybe with the mesmerism with the hypnosis with the magnetism with the counseling session we need to create an ambience of trust where the other one can let go. A circle of trust. Mm. A, a, a real circle of trust. Because um, counseling, hypnosis, even uh, mesmerism, uh, if it not fooled, feel fooled with mm. your essence, it's just a technique. I mean... Okay. If you don't embody the yes, essence, yes. that is just technique. Yes, I mean, uh, hypnosis, it's a technique, but therapy, it's a process. It's mm -hmm. something completely different. So I maybe I am very strong with techniques. I am capable. I am performant. That, but when the person is in that state, state start therapy, start mm -hmm. that connection. And this is the, the main moment, the, the real work. It is not just a question of technique, in fact. It's not a and matter of techniques, of course. Yes, it's a question of soul. Because, and because the, we perceive the, the congruence yes, in the, the other one. Feeling. Mesmerism is feeling, in fact. And the, the person feels that there is no criticism i don't define him i don't Absolutely. think oh blah, or he, he's ugly or she's maybe um, uh, uh, yes um, an unconditional acceptance unconditional love i mean mm. uh, magnetism is the true love of the nature nature loves all the creator of her creators and you are using the force of the nature with without um having no definitions yes without um critica critic critical without being critical i mean in that moment i am the nature i am mother nature okay non-judgmental yes can feel can feel this how the, nature can be uh, ben benefit mm. on that same kind of theme there esther i have a message here from marco yes and marco is uh, bringing up the the uh, sensitive issue of pornography and how that has 
um, developed during the uh, the 80s and the 90s and the 2000s. The generation of the 80s, 90s and 2000s grew up with full access to pornography that oh. from one side has helped parents to avoid to talk about sex and sexuality with their sons. On the other hand, this has developed the idea that in order to feel completely fulfilled in sex, you need to have a certain type of body features or you need to be able to have a very high sex drive. Ladies, what do you think about that? Are we talking about the genital thing? <laughs> Well, he says that a certain type of body features, certain body features. Well, you know, it's exactly like hypnosis, porno yeah. is technique. Making love is soul. So mm -hmm. we can learn this technique thanks to porno, but porno doesn't teach us the intimacy. Well, isn't it similar to what Fiametta was saying last week that? She had two men, two men wanting to uh, offer her in lockdown, love in lockdown, goodness. But then <laughs> the, the man that you ended up having the relationship with in a virtual sense, you felt more attraction to, though there was never any meeting on a physical level, was there? You know, that, yeah. that emotional. Yeah, actually we are now i guess that what marco is saying is that actually pornography has uh released a topic that was like a taboo at the very same time um it has the de desensitized uh, desensibilization how do you would you say that People lost sensibi sensibility to the nudity. And now people watching porn, I would like to remind that during the lockdown and all the crisis, the only server that never fell down was the Pornhub one. That means that they put lots of money and energy in keeping up that platform because they have millions of users. However, pornography has generated uh, in people the, the sexual uh, sex. Um, what's the word for it? Sex. Sex. People are sex dependent. Addicted. 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 Sex addiction. So, sex addiction. So there has been um, as. Per, we were saying the naked body, no? we are now very naked outside and cover up inside. The same happened with sex through pornography. Now, good, great performances, acrobatics and very extreme. Yeah, yeah. And we mirror ourselves into the porn. At the very same time, we don't know how to touch each other because we lost that nakedness, you know, the ability to connect, as we were saying, through mesmerism and hypnotism and the counselor, the real connection. You know, that was, as we were talking about me, that was the kind of connection that I found in a, let's say, virtual relationship with no physical touch that, however, gave me a sense of connection that I was looking for as a human being in such an odd moment like the lockdown. Mm -hmm. So we are now probably historically facing a very important time where we are now putting all together in discussion, as we can say that, and try to uh, question ourselves and the whole world about as we were saying the other time what do i want this new world to be like how do i want the naked i how do i want my naked truth to be displayed or handled or recognized or just connected to by someone else Fiametta, I have to mention this, and, and you, Esther, I'm so much older than you guys, and there's a film called Barbarella. 
here but oh, I that. you know it's oh yeah so good good yes beautiful wow in the future do you think sex will be us doing the magnetism thing you just in in the film they just touched hands and uh connected <laughs> they have them. orgasm yeah <laughs> no, no exchange of body that would be great news for all the thousands or millions of women who can't reach an organ. <laughs> if that orgasmati machine, well, the, 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 Mm -hmm. That is the answer well, of the no, 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 no. orgasm. <laughs> of course, because um, of course, because you drop all of your control. You know that is the moment where you the French people say le petit me, le petit me. But orgasm is this not ecstasy. Pay attention. Uh, okay. Before yes. Oh la la. <laughs> So yes, it is fluid, you know, ecstasy. Uh, it, it is something different. It requires relation. You um, said before that today porn is creating a lot of sex addicted. I was asking myself why because maybe maybe mm, i i ask you uh, or all person that are listening to us maybe uh, each, each one of you has the a different uh, position but maybe this sex addiction uh, it's the natural consequence that after porn you have of course an orgasm but that orgasm leaves you a bittersweet, you know, a bittersweet uh, sensation because you feel alone after there is the naked truth. And the naked truth is that you are in front of a video. That person. Um, it sounds awful. Because after I, up, I need to be hug. I yeah. need to be caressed. Trust I me. need most to of, be most embraced. Sex addicted people, they don't need anything anymore. Sex, a, a drug addict doesn't have needs anymore rather than for drugs. And sex addiction is, a, is kind of the same thing. You watch porn because it's uh, easy. You sit home, you don't sweat. You don't have to uh, conquer the other one. You don't have to do anything. It's just easy to consume. And that creates the addiction that- Yes, because after the, the doesn't match with your, e there, there is a pulsion, okay, mm -hmm. sexual reproduction. Okay, let's mm -hmm. talk about uh, very Brain. primary, no? But this instinct needs also love embrace that embrace doesn't come so i'm looking once again for a contact because in fact i am oh. looking for that 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 and doesn't come so this is um this is exactly like um, overeating then isn't it because a lot of ladies it's usually ladies that i see that have eating disorders as in they uh, yes and um, there are all sorts of eating disorders, but somebody that is eating and eating and eating and wants to stop but can't. And it's as if they're looking for the pleasure in the food. And so it's going in fast and they're yeah. not savoring it. They're not enjoying it. And yes. so they're full, but they're still unfulfilled, even though they're full. Is that like you're explaining with sex? They, you, they, they look, sex, but they they're run after the stimulo. They run after the stimulation, you mm. know, yeah. that I get from food, that I get from porn, that I get from gambling, that, uh, you know. But here's, here's the time to say 
a good magnetism person, a good mesmerist, a good hypnotist can just touch you on the hand to yes. enter an orgasm, can't they? Yes, oh. it is but it's an ecstatic orgasm mm. because yeah. you are connected with your um, higher being. Yes. Yeah. So you are connected with with, with, with the love of, of the nature that is ecstatic because mm. it's a kind of love that normally we don't live. And um, yes, in, in fact, um, how many, if you, if you see, for example, uh, a magnetizer at work, maybe you that you are watching the process, you are embarrassed because there are some really uh, um, connection between bodies and even positions that reminds uh, making love. But it's in fact, it's the human being that makes love with nature. Oh, oh. oh. yes, oh, poetry. Oh. Mm. That was poetry. Well, and if you, Esther, as a magnetist, do or as a mesmerist, you do work like that poetry well. No wonder people love to work with you. It was a pleasure to me. People, people yeah. are very ready to face sex. They don't, they don't, they, they don't are ready with this love. So the, most of the time, the reaction of the person is, whoa, they, you know. They cry. They cry. Well, when you are loved for the very first time, I mean really loved, of course, all of the energy in your body resonates. Yes. And that can come through tears. Yes. So for the first time, I feel love. And it mm. is not a question of woman, of man. It is not a question of, of sex. It is it's the power of love. And this is so um, free, the free, free libera. So mm -hmm. we are free in that moment. That's we are really true. free That's from true. all that overstructures that our society, our learnings, our educational, and even our thoughts are creating inside of us. Uh, you asked me, Jenny, before um, to maybe reveal to our public, how emotions can be uh, uh, read in our face and in our body. Hmm? Yes, because I said, um, if our face can tell you a lot about our character, then what about the rest of us? What does that say? What What is everything else telling you? Ooh. The system is connected. So the same thing that says the face, the body, do they are saying exactly the same thing in a different way but the message is the same for example oh, esther yeah. if, you, if you were on that show then and the curtain was raised in the cubicle and you saw the man's legs and then the man's genitals would you know his character of course in that genital, there is the same. Um, in, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's very easy after to imagine the face. I mean, you are saying that you could tell somebody's face from somebody's penis. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, no, 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 that's a TV show. That's a TV show. Yes. You get an artist to the space after you see the genital. written in that genital. I could tell somebody's genitals from their hands, by their hands. Oh, oh I no, never no. thought that I could tell somebody's face from their penis. That would be interesting. The next topic. That would be interesting. <laughs> That would be interesting. Yes. We have yeah, a comment here from, um, from Gosha who says, um, beautifully said, 
and uh, I, uh, I need that. So we need to teach these skills to some ladies, I think. <laughs> the penis. Secret the, learning. The penis thing. Very secret learning. Maybe we will do this secret and exoterical learning. But in fact, it is possible because we are a fractal. You know what is a fractal? It's the same uh, design uh, to the infin infinitive. Okay, so um, the, the same message is written in the little uh, cellula of our body. Uh, of our body. So we can study uh, a character, we can study moral characteristic, maybe just studying a piece of skin. Because um, if I can have my DNA turns and turns and turns yeah. and turns and, and says exactly the same thing ah. we can we can maybe oh the 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 light is gone can you see me yes, of course you can. it's okay because here yeah. is now uh, okay you're right then esther because if they can take a, 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 some hair or skin from us and clone another yes. body of us then of course all of our dna is in every cell isn't it so it'll be yes. In our yes. face and down there, you know. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> no surprises. No surprises. There we are. No. We've only got to see your face now. All those men out there, all those women out there, and we know exactly. Well, well, well that, that, teaching, naked. that teaching may be useful for all those ladies using the chats, you know, to the, the the chat app to get to know other people. How would it be to be able to tell some features by looking at somebody's face picture? That would be interesting. Yes. <laughs> Esther, what happens then when people have uh, changed their bodies with plastic surgery, etc.? Because on that show, um, the, the, the reason why some a lady was choosing a man and the reason why she didn't want some of the men was because he, he's not hairy enough, or he's too hairy, or you know, they would pick certain um, things that are preferences. You know, who's to say whether it's uh, attractive to have a lot of hair or not? Isn't it just personal to that person's preferences? But what if um, a lady who's very slight suddenly gets breast implants? She's not then going to her body is not going to match her face is it that's a interesting lady, a lady that is very thin with the big bowl in nature doesn't exist like like dogs um, mm. with pedigree that are mm. created in laboratory it's because i see these ladies on films etc and i can tell that they've had implants i, I know some men are very skilled with this <laughs> whether they're <laughs> real or not <laughs> you can tell because they don't have the the, the curve in the hips exactly they have huge bosoms but they have very slight hips and you think they're going to fall over they're going <laughs> to it's a question of balance, Jenny. <laughs> well, we've talked about Jane Fonda in Barbarella, but what about um, uh, Raquel oh, Welsh oh. in 2000 BC? Do you remember she had a, a rib removed, which she regretted? The producer or the director asked her to have a rib removed so her waist looked smaller so that she could have ironically a more womanly figure yeah. and then yeah. the rest of us tried to wear corsets to nip in our waist because we couldn't afford the plastic surgery yes <laughs> so yes, in fact uh, when the, the the yes how do you do, do you call these the breasts the breast breasts. okay yes nature when the breast is very abundant that woman is maternal, you know, so is sweet. Oh. It's like a welcome, you know. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, the body of that woman in nature will be exactly the same, like a sofa. 
come oh. here and take yeah. rest. Yeah. Come oh. here and nourish you. Mm. Like my body. Come. Yes. Come I here am a sofa. and I am a sofa. <laughs> <laughs> I am a sofa. I'm a three free street. <laughs> I'm a setting. Yes, in fact, it, it's awesome. the energy of the man, See, yeah, but the real energy. man, you know, so you can, you can dream, you can sleep, here I am, here I am always for you, you will be always welcome to me, mm. it's like a home, you know, a yeah. sweet home, I that's think why that's... nature doesn't exist. The big, the big breast with the thin yes. bodies. Because yes. the thin body is another kind of energy. It's the energy of rapidity. You know? It's the energy of activity. It's the energy of nerves. It's another kind of energy. So um, normally in nature, a thin body correspond a very uh, small breast because that human need to be um, agile, agile, yeah. Mercurian, Mercurian energy. So if I have a big ball here, it's yeah. very difficult to me to be energetic and yeah, fun and active. I'm a lover, not a runner. <laughs> I'm a lover, not a runner. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> some other, some other time we'll talk about having a big breast and all the everyday features like running, like dressing, like. But anyway. Yes, if you do surgery, you are uh, sending to your body a very incoherent message. Of course. Because in fact you should like to be feminine it's feminine well do you know when um, that body is masculine and so the, the energy is masculine so maybe that system if you don't work on your femininity on your yes female to be female in some months maybe you can have some problem Mm. It's a very practical thing as well. We've just had, uh, do you guys know Tony Robbins over there? Mm -hmm. Tony Robbins, yes. the um, yes. motivational. Yes. Speaker. Yes. No, oh, Anthony no. Robbins. Yes. yes. He's just done a, a, a comeback challenge, a seven day comeback challenge on Facebook. Ah. And so, of course, we watched it. It's great and very energetic. Though, so, because he's, um, he's a large man. He comes on Facebook and he's jumping up and down and he's making oh. everybody jump up and down to, to create the energy, to create the energy. And I'm sitting there thinking, I, I don't have a sports bra on. I'm not going to do that. And also, excuse me, do you have to, sorry, Tony, but do you have to be physically energetic to create energy? Well, not in mesmerism, not in magnetism, do you? You don't need no. to say, come on, everybody, come on. I'm, Tony's not going to come on until you are energized enough. Come on, jump up and down. And there are all these young girls jumping up and down. And, that and is physical energy, yeah. you know, the stimulation of physical energy. But yeah. this is, it's different from true energy that comes from vitality. You understand? Yeah. yeah. The so maybe is very enthusiastic, but not vital. Mm. Mm. That's why you must simulate maybe in that way. Or Anthony thinks that it's important to stimulate uh, that person in that way. In fact, true energy, it's a question of vitality. Because I did, I was feeling sorry for the people who were watching, who wanted to be... Oh. Um, enlightened and they wanted to be energized but what if they're in a wheelchair or an old people's home or what if they were unable to do that they would have perhaps felt that they couldn't enjoy and be enthusiastic um, enough because they were physically unable to do the jumping up and down etc it, it seemed to be um, a, 
exclusive. Okay. And, uh, mesmerism and magnetism and as well inclusive isn't it you know anybody yeah, included, because included. vitality it's not a question of um you know of, of art maybe mm. it, it's a question vitality comes from the source of our, our art of our soul so maybe you um have physical problems but you can be a lot vital. We have here an example in Italy, a champion that has lost his legs, but mm. his spirit is still alive. And he is more vital than others that has all the arms and all the legs. Yeah. So mesmerism is the yes magnetism animal magnetism is the rise of the sun that you have inside of you the sun and the moon the fire see the fire yes, element. yes. is yeah. the masculine and the feminine inside of you these mm -hmm. two energies that works and are together inside of you and that creates the unity that you are looking for all your life and you have inside of you. Yeah. I remember you commenting that you understood why I'd moved to Rhodes in Greece because of the sun, because yeah. I had this need to be in the sun. We get the sun here in England, but not as much as Greece. And at that point in my life, I needed the sun. I really needed the sun. Yes. And, and it was more the energy, the than the world. day. You know, it was uh, it was very much needed by by me that at that time. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you you felt inside of you that you needed that kind of energy. Yes. You, you feel inside of you, and mm -hmm. you were looking something very natural. So, Father Son, could you yeah. also explain to me? I know it's getting a little personal here, but can you? Explain to me because I I loved underwater swimming, and every day I was at the beach, and I loved the sea, and I know the sea is represent representative of emotion. Water is emotion, yeah. and I think you told me, Jenny, go to the mountains. You need to be more in the land, not in the sea, because I'm a very emotional person. I needed the stability of the land, didn't I? rather than the fluidity and the emotions of the sea. Is that correct? Am I remembering correctly? Um, okay, yes, you remember very well. But in fact, you were connecting as well to your primary element. Because if you can remember, you were born as lunar and the element of the moon is the water ah thank you yes. so you mm -hmm. were connecting to your first we can say um element mm -hmm. for you the water is very important yes yes yeah. that's why in and for you when you want to balance yourself look for the water because it is mm -hmm. like to connect to your primary element and the water will will help you for for example Fiametta it's another type okay so but for you that you are a lunar type with this kind of water element when you feel exhausted please look for water well this is probably why people tease me because I have to have a bath I can't be doing with yes. these hours uh, yes. I have a shower but I like yes. a bath and it must be an instinctive thing. I need to be in water. I need to be in water. Yes. It's return to the source. I know what is my mm. source. Even yeah. I am not conscious of mm. my source. My yeah. body knows what yeah. is my source. And to, to keep in with the theme of this uh, live feed, by the way, ladies, guess what? When I'm in the bath, I'm naked. You're naked. You're naked. Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, <laughs> this is terrible. 
<laughs> this is real, real terrible. I would really okay, love, right I would really love to know from our viewers how do they feel about their nakedness, their nudity? Do they feel do you feel comfortable with your naked body? Do you touch your body? Because you were talking about taking a bath. When I take a bath, I actually cuddle my body and thank my body for all the work that it does for me walking and standing still and all of the emotions that carries so i think my body i would love to know about you people how do you feel with you, about your body do you love your body do you like what would you change about your your physical body and how do you feel about your inner nudity the uh, the lovely gosha has said interesting I love the sea, but above the water. <laughs> um, I'm waiting to hear from her now because I've just said, are you, uh, do you think you're a bath person? Who's a bath person and who's a shower person from ah, our world today? Also, this is interesting. So imagine, do you do you bath or shower? Bath or shower, Fiametta? Well, bath. 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 Uh, and you uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> with bubbles, with bubbles and scented perfumes oh, and yeah. candles and yeah. 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 Do you know? Not I good. never realised how important. I know you've talked about smell, but I never realised how important it was to one's mood until. I lost my sense of smell. Occasionally, I get a little bit of the sense back, but for the most part, um, I use eucalyptus oil and tea tree and to try and smell. And so in the bath, I put different things. But the strange thing is, ladies, I feel the effects of the oils. So for yes. those people that didn't think essential oils were very powerful, if you put too much in a bath, you don't stay in the bath for long. <laughs> yes, I know, because it's burning. <laughs> I can't smell. It's just very strange. And like um, people wearing perfume and men wearing aftershave. I smell the acetone. I smell the chemical, not the perfume. And it's weird. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I think all oh, that person's wearing a lot of perfume because I can smell the chemical and not the fragrance. Yes. Not, not the natural. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, my darling. I think we it's it's time to oh, yes. yes. Goodbye to our friends. Oh. We are inviting you to comment. We are inviting you. Gosha says, I I start. I start to like my body as I'm getting older. That's interesting. And she loves the water in the bath. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so Gosh is one of our people. She's a bath person. And she's starting to like her body as she's getting older. One That's of the best things of getting older is that yes. we really begin to love ourselves and yes. Yes. to feel yes. free about all that standard and all that measurement in fact yes it's a good game mm. uh, it's like we are getting older but we are getting old. more yes. and more close to us yes i do love you know, that. in a when i do some advanced hypnotherapy on ladies that don't like their bodies one thing that I do is um, instead of regressing them to the past to clear up any issues with their body, I progress them to yeah. the future. Because if you make a 20-year-old lady uh, believe that they are 80 years old, looking back at a photograph of themselves, yes. oh, yeah. my goodness, do they love their body. Yes. You know, they appreciate more the the nature of the body and the youthfulness rather than oh this is wrong and that's wrong 
it's amazing they, they're in tears and they're grateful and they're happy when they come out of trance because it, as Gosh is saying, being that little bit older, we tend to appreciate things more. I think when we're young, we, we see things that are wrong. Would you agree, ladies? Yes, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Completely. Completely, yes. Now yeah. it's time to get naked into bed. <laughs> with a with a, the, una goccia with a, of, with a drop of Chanel. <laughs> no, but it's, it's you know it's very hot here in Italy. It's very hot, and yes. you know it's very the, hot. Now, the yeah. truth is that I sleep naked, you know, because that is ah uh, freedom. So. It's time oh, to get me, me, with uh, um, a sotana. How do you say sotana? Underwear. The yes, old but, grandma's. Uh, yes, but very feminine. Very sexy, like like uh, Sofia Loren. Feminine. Like Sofia Loren. Yes. Yes, like Sofia Loren. Exactly. <laughs> do you know, I have a very confident, very very beautiful friend, and she's. Um, very well endowed, we say. She has a beautiful figure and always has done. And she said to me a couple of weeks ago, because I was helping her with something, and she said uh, uh, that she would never be naked in bed. And no. I said, why? What? what? It's just too rude. Oh, how rude. <laughs> I, I understand. love. No, and this is intimacy. Yes, yes. Maybe it's a British thing. So uh, Gosh has said, however, after, after giving birth to two children, my breasts need an implant as they look like balls in socks, which <laughs> suddenly makes me really comfortable. <laughs> Thanks to your, please. Please, well, that was, that was your enough. goal because they have feed two children. Right. Yes, yes. Mm. And they can feel, really, there is an exercise in magnetism when you are really talking with your organs and your body. Mm. And your balls can feel if you love them or not. So please... There you love go. them, and we love them because yes. love them. Yes, yes. love yes. them. It, isn't that well after the, the, my, my, my having my child? I have to to yes. give them energy. <laughs> because energy invigorates, doesn't it? Energy invigorates, yes. and criticism depletes. Yes, yes. We, talk, we talked about unconditional love. If we, don't don't love, love. if we don't love unconditionally ourselves and our bodies first, how can we possibly express this love to other people? You know, yeah. we need yeah. to be the first yeah. in loving and accepting our beautiful body, yes. even when it's far from the standards we see on TV or, you know, on the commercials. Because it's our vehicle, you know, it's, you know, what allows us to express us, ourselves in the physical dimension, in the, you know, in the matter. In the, in the matter, yes. Yeah. No, it's interesting, Fiametta, sorry to interrupt, is that because of lockdown and we've got all these famous actors and actresses and uh, singers on uh, their webcams at home, even the actors and actresses that you're talking about on TV and commercials, even, they don't look like them. They yes, don't look exactly. like them. It's artificial. Yes, you know, of course. They're, they're so what we've been trying to live up to is an impossible standard. And they have all sorts of mental health issues themselves because they know that the world sees them in this state of, perfection which we don't know we know is not real it's not perfect natural perfection and so they know that they they're not the person that you see on the screen so yes. you know we're not 
we know it's all false. This lockdown has taught us. Isn't it wonderful to see people without yeah. makeup at I home think with be, their dog? I, I think it would be nice. Maybe next time we could talk about self confidence. Yes, self confidence. I oh my god! <laughs> special guest. Special guest. Mysterious guest. <laughs> the real animal. The real animal. Amore. Our body animal. Amore. <laughs> so Pippi's saying it's time to finish. He wants everybody to be natural <laughs> and to love their bodies. <laughs> He'll get very annoyed if you're not loving your body. Come on, Gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, ciao, ciao from Rome. And let us know what you think about nudity. How do you feel about you being naked, inside, outside, genitals, not genitals, breasts, whatever body parts you feel comfortable or not. Don't say naked. that because don't, um, don't say that. There is no, no, no. no genitals no. here. No, 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 no genitals pictures, please. Anyway, thank <laughs> you, ladies. Thank you. And if people are watching this, leave us a comment so that we know <laughs> what to do with next the next time with our lovely live feeds and. I really want to thank you, Fear Meta and Esther. And from me, Jenny, Hypno Woman, thank you to everybody that's been watching and for your wonderful comments. And we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ciao. Okay.